Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. And God bless you, friends and family. Pastor Easy with Easy Ministries. I always want to say thank you and God bless you. Well, today is Sunday. Sunday, November 13th. And I want to start off by saying thank the Lord, you know, for my salvation, for what he is doing. I want to thank him because he's really been taking me through some challenges, some obstacles, you know, really been challenging my faith, been challenging my character and also my uh, the challenge at home, being a father, being a pastor, being a husband, all these things that are being implied into this into this movement that God is really uh, working in me. And if he is working in me, you know, for the times that we are living in now, for everything that is taking place across the world, I know that he is working in you. And today's message, this morning's message, Sunday, November 13th, is entitled, You Are the Vessel. This morning's message is entitled, you are the vessel and it's important here that we understand what the vessel is and how important it is that you understand these principles that we are about to uh, uh pre- that we are about to teach here that the bible is about to teach us all with scriptures we're going to back it all up for the times that we are living in now the Bible says that do not worry when trials come your way like something strange is happening. This is all a process of your faith. This is all a process of the growing in your life. This is all the process God has for you. So we have to learn how to embrace our cross. We have to learn how to embrace that we are the vessel and that God is ready to pour into our life in a manner where it'll be fruitful and beneficial to not only yourself, but to everyone who comes in contact with you because you are called for the times that we are in now to be set aside, to be separate, to be used for God's honor and God's glory, to take your belief and to take your faith to the next level. Hallelujah. So if you have your Bibles out, we will be reading from the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy, and we'll be starting in verse in chapter three, we'll be we'll be reading chapters two, three, and four, in and out of all of them. I put it in a I put it in a format where I figure I was comfortable reading it, preaching it, and sharing it with you, brothers and sisters. God bless everybody all across the world. We have audience that comes in from everywhere. A special shout out of Thanksgiving to you. Um, this is an easy ministry. This is a new ministry that is just starting. That has been being uh, that has been being poured into by the Spirit of God to start something to unite with people all over the world to be able to strategize slowly. It'll take place. It's not immediate, but we have take the we have taken the proper steps, and we are taking the proper steps. Yes, to be challenged, to be used by God's honor and God's glory. Amen and amen. So as we take this time this morning to get into a little prayer. Because this is an online ministry. This is an online ministry, meaning I am coming to you on the phone with the word of Christ, being able to teach the word of Christ, being able to be a vessel, an example, being able to step out of the normal and to step into something new, something different, something challenging. Have I ever been on a screen before? No. Have I ever been uh, uh, preaching to audiences? No. This is all brand new for me. God has called me and stepping me out to be challenged. So I am new to all this. I don't know everything. I don't know it all. But I have a story. You have a story. And I'm sure together we can have this story unfold right before our very eyes. So let's pray before we get into this service. You are the vessel. 
Yes. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. As we take this time, Father, to pray, God, to get prepared for a service, God, to get prepared to get into the book of 2 Timothy, Lord, to get prepared, Father, to get that confidence, God, to be prepared to to start exercising the field in our heart, to receive a word, God, to receive, Father, some instruction, God, to receive, God, some motivation, God, to receive, Lord, a challenge, God. Father, we know that all around us, God, seems to be crumbling, Father. All over the world, there are trials, there are destruction, there is real evil, Father, being performed, God, in a massive power uh, wave, Lord, whether blue or red, green or yellow, whatever color flags in the air, Lord. I know, Father, that the only flag that matters, God, is the blood-stained banner, Father. The one, Father, Jesus Christ, who died, Father, and that he rose on a third day, God, to give us power, God. Yes, to give us power and to give us authority to trample over serpents, God. Yes, Father, that we can become more like you and your son, Jesus Christ, Father, to be able to walk and perform miracles, God. Yes, Father, to put all the honor and all the glory in your hand, God. Yes, Father, through that glorious name, Father, hallelujah. We thank you for all your messengers, God, that are out there, Lord. Whatever type of messengers you have them in whatever corner you have them, Lord. Yes, a special touch for them, God. Keep them to the end of time, Lord. Hallelujah, Father. Continue to motivate, Father those that are rising up right now father to be challenged by you god yes lord hallelujah god who are challenged father to live a life in you god yes father to be challenged father to turn away their worldly mindsets father and to inherit the kingdom mindset god yes father the heavenly mindset god yes god hallelujah in the name of jesus lord i pray for every believer every follower god Yes, Father. I pray, Father, for the newcomers that you are bringing into your kingdom, God. Yes, Father, that you are calling, Father, out of the mist, out of the darkness, God, out of the crevices of the cities, Lord. Yes, out of the dark places, God, where nobody is daring, Father, to preach your gospel, Lord. We know that you have people that are lined up there, Father. Right at the gate, Father, preaching the gospel, God. Hallelujah, Father. Yes, Lord. Give us the confidence, Lord. Thank you for the confidence, God. Thank you for the abilities, Lord. Thank you for the new mindset, for the new drive, Lord. Yes, for the new chapter. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Teach us to have more faith, God. Teach us to have more knowledge, Father. How to have more drive and gasoline, Father. Set us on fire, Lord. As you have been doing, Father, for over 2,000 years, Father, separating your people, Father, for the moments and times they are in, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Come into our hearts, Lord Jesus. Come into our minds, Lord Jesus. Yes, Holy Spirit. Yes, you are welcome here. You are welcome here, Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here, Father. Yes, fill your people, Lord. Fill your temples, Lord. Fill your vessels, God. Use them for your honor, for your glory, Lord. Yes, Lord, I lift up our families unto you, our children, God. Yes, Father, our adopted children, Lord. Yes, Father, your word says, who is my family? My family is those that do the will of God. These are your family, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, be confident where you are. Yes, your brother is right next to you fighting, Father. Hallelujah. Your brother is fighting next to you. Your sister is fighting next to you. Yes, they are all being challenged right now. Yes, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you for the victory, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing in our lives, God. Yes, Father, we know, God, as long as we continue to live in you, God, that there is nothing that can separate us, Lord. We tell the devil and Satan and his legions to get behind us, for they have no authority 
and the process and in the vision that God has given you. Hallelujah. Yes, in the name of Jesus, I lift up this service unto you this Sunday morning. God, set me aside, Father. Let your word be the only thing here that is glorified throughout this whole service and throughout this whole world, Father. We bring you honor. We bring you glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Well, welcome, brothers and sisters, to Easy Ministries, Pastor Easy's online uh, church. Uh, pretty soon, uh, it's in the it's in it's in the vision. Some call it a vision board, right? It's on our vision board for the building. It's on our vision board for much more, much more things to be coming with Easy Ministries. It's not just a one thing; it is a many things. Hallelujah! The Bible says to become all things to all men so that you may save some you're not going to save them all but we can save some and we can attempt to change the world hallelujah second timothy brothers and sisters chapter two and we are talking about the vessel here we are talking about a temple here we are talking about a body here we are talking about a member here we are talking about a son, a daughter here of the most high God. We are talking about a creation that is created in God's image, a creation that has been set aside for such a time that we are in now. And I know, and I am challenged always when I read the word to be challenged in my faith and in my beliefs and in my wisdom, hallelujah. But God, nevertheless, he will bring these sermons. Yes, so we're going to go to the book, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. And I want you to know that you are a vessel. And you are set aside for God's special purpose, for God's honor, and for God's glory. I know sometimes things don't make sense in your life. But God wants them to make sense in your life. And I hope that this message will touch you and motivate you and challenge you to clean up that vessel. It says, but know this, that in the last days... What does it say that in the last days, perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, ungodly, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, the Bible says they're brutal, despisers of good, traitors, it says. Headstrong individuals, individuals who are haughty, who walk around with their chest puffed up saying, look what I can do for you. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. The Bible says that they have a form of godliness, but they deny its power for from such people the bible tells us to turn away the bible says for this sort the bible says in verse 6 chapter 3 verse 6 second timothy chapter 3 verse 6 get your bibles out you want power you're about to get power it says for of this sort are those who creep into households. Hmm. Hallelujah. Look at this. So be wise, my friend, my brothers and my sisters. For of this sort are these and those who creep into households and make captive of gullible women loaded down with sins. Led away by furious lust, 
always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapproved concerning the faith. What they do? Disapproved concerning the faith. They will lash at your faith. They will say you are wrong. They will say you are a liar. They will say you are the devil. They will say that you work in the devil's name. Eventually, it will come to the point where well, they will say crucify him. Is what the Bible teaches us here. Hallelujah. But thank God that he was crucified for our sins. Hallelujah. He does say that, that we will go through the same type of destiny as Christ went through. Hallelujah. But everlasting life, nevertheless, is the gift of eternal life. Yes. So he's telling us here in the last time. It says men will, will be lovers of themselves. They will no longer think about your neighbors. America has come to the point where we are competing with each other. We can no longer go and hang out with people because there is a competition that the devil has put in our hearts. Telling us that we desire that or we desire this from that other. When the truth is we should all desire communion, community. Hallelujah. Oh, well, you're not like this, like this woman or like this man. He does it this way or she does it that way. The devil will come in like that with slander. Huh? Let's see. Let's read that again. It says, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. They'll be boasters. They'll be proud. They'll be blasphemers. They'll be disobedient to their parents. They'll be unthankful, ungodly, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal desires. Look at this. De desires of, it says brutal despisers of good traitors headstrong holly lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god having a form of godliness but denying its power not here my brother not here my sister we teach power here we teach the name of christ we teach that these types of characteristics and these types of demons and legions that come with it are not allowed in this vessel hallelujah the Bible says that you are a vessel and it says in the last times, these peril times, it says that there will be many vessels out there with all these demons, unforgiving slander without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, backbiters, howdy lovers and pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. And from such people, the Bible tells us to stay away for this sorts are those who creep into your house and they take the captivity and take your guilt and they make you feel even more guilt to keep them in Oh my God, hallelujah, let me not run down that way. Captive and gullible women loaded down with sins, laid away by furious lusts. They chase ignorance, have mercy, always learning and never being able to come to the knowledge of truth. Yes, they're smart. Yes, they're good looking. Yes, they're well educated. Yes, they can deceive you. Yes, they come in wolves in sheep's clothing. Yes, they do. And when you recognize them, the Bible says that from these you are to flee. It says led away by furious lust, always learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as James and Jabra resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, the Bible says, these are vessels of corruption, disapproved concerning the truth, but they will progress no further for their follies will manifest to all as there also was. Amen. 
the Bible is telling us that these types of characteristics, when you find them coming in, that you do not let them pour into your vessel, that you be wise to guard your heart, to continue being strong, continue being a vessel of truth, a vessel of love, a, a vessel of forgiveness, a vessel of joy, a vessel of patience, uh, of endurance, of perseverance, you know, long suffering for no doing good for him that knows to do good and does not do it. It becomes a sin. It wars within you. It starts to bring in, uh, it starts to bring in unthankfulness and ungodliness. You see, be careful how you are let, allowing others to impact your life. You know, people will come in. You have, when people come into your life and you say a hello, you say a handshake, you have a spiritual tie. There's something that's taking place in a spiritual realm. You could ignore it. I am just a stranger bringing the good news. The good news is for you. There is a reason. Because we are in such a time as this, you know, everything happens for a reason to those that love God. I am being inspired because I love God. This man is being inspired because he loves God. This man is making a change over here because he loves God. This woman over here is making an impact in community because she loves God. We are vessels that are willing to be poured into, the Bible says, here in the book of Timothy. And then I go to verse 12. After reading, reading these uh, 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 perilous times and ungodly, uh, 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 ungodly characters, right? Demons, legions. It says, yes, all those who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution, but evil men and imposters will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. He's telling us here that, that perilous times are here, that men are lovers of themselves, that these are vessels, that you must, you must stay away from these types of vessels lest they pour into your life, right, and bring poison. And don't allow you to become all that God has called you to be. You should be the vessel pouring into the life of these other vessels. If you can, Paul tells us to, if possible, to try to live at peace with all men. As much as it is in you. It tells us that evil men will continue to rise up, continue to manipulate uh, people, women and men to be lost and deceived to be a part of the mindset of the world to be all polluted by news and media and all these entertainment functionalities that they put for us like television and all these shows that manipulate us to sit still and to feed into our spirituality where we feel empty by the end of the day like we want more I hope I'm speaking to somebody here. Hallelujah. The Bible says that, yeah, when you decide to be God with God, you are a chosen few. You are a vessel that you are set aside for God's honor and for God's glory. He says, but be careful because in perilous times, it says there are men out there who will deceive, right? Knowing from whom you have learned them, it says, verse 16, it says, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work, lacking nothing. <clears throat> Amen. You are to be a vessel, the Bible says. You are a, a vessel of good works, well equipped, he's saying. 
He says, don't stay in ignorance. He says, read the scriptures. There are instructions for righteousness. They are going to help you exceed and excel. He says, the scriptures will reapproof you. Yes, it'll correct you. It'll bring correction, it says. The scriptures will rise up within you, it says. It will rise up within you and give you give you that very second clarity you need to overcome an obstacle and a challenge that you are going through. And we know here that we are being challenged because it is a testing of our faith. It is purifying us. It is restoring us. It is envisioning us. Hallelujah. So remember, we're talking about the vessel. We're talking about you being a vessel of God. Having only the fruits of the spirit, the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we should not allow all these other spirits to come in that are not that are not traits of the Holy Spirit. We know the spirits, right? Love, patience, uh, uh, humility, long suffering, gentleness. And here we go. And Paul tells us about these slanders, these 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 other types of uh, uh, un unfruitful bad fruits, as we should say them, or demons or legions that will try to come into your vessel here. Look, should I read them again to give you a clarity? He says, he says, lovers of money, lovers of themselves. He says, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, ungodly, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong people, howdy, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power of it, huh? Hallelujah. God says these types of characteristics you shall not be practicing in your vessel. He says you are a vessel of good. You should be pouring out into other vessels. Do not allow these types of vessels to pour into you. He says, as a matter of fact, he says, don't even be partakers with these types of people because they're going to come in and they're going to cause you much stress in your faith. Hallelujah. It says a little bit of yeast will make the dough rise. The Bible talks about it. He says good company. It says bad company will corrupt good habits, my friend. The Bible says they continue to be in the light on the stand, not under the bed where somebody can put a blanket over and nobody sees nothing. But he says put it on the lampstand, right, so that everyone can see it and nobody can be able to quench that flame. Hallelujah. So I got some scriptures here off the internet, right, that I got from the internet on the vessel. Because you are the vessel. Let's see if I can get it here. Right? The enemy don't want me to come with these types of messages because they infiltrate what he's got going on with individuals out there, with you and I. He doesn't want me. See? Look at here, this this thing. Oh, see, now it wants to. All right. So here we go. Because the enemy does want to attack. He doesn't want you to hear messages like this because he doesn't want you to know that you are a vessel of what's taking place on the outside. The Bible says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, right? Against forces, evil, high places that they're controlling the movements. They're controlling what we eat. They're controlling how we hear things. They're controlling the way they give us messages through subliminal type deals. Yeah, yeah, all that type of stuff. So powerful stuff here. And these are scriptures I took off the internet about vessels. Bible verses about vessels. You are the vessel. Verse 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21, it says, If a man therefore purges himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and met for the master's use. For what? For the master's use and prepared unto every good work. See what it's saying here, my brother? It says to acknowledge that you are a vessel and you are being used by God. Hallelujah. Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 through 20 it says what now what with the question mark know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is 
in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, my brother, my sister, for you are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Amen. You are a vessel of the Holy Spirit. It says, purge yourself from those previous lifestyles, from those previous habits, from those previous things. He says, overcome, overgrow, be challenged. And the master, he says, purge yourself of these things. He says, purge yourself. That means exercise yourself. That means practice the Holy Spirit. That means wake up every day and take yourself and your mindset to be challenged to another level. Don't get comfortable in sitting down with your nine to fiver and your in your chair at home and your television that keeps feeding you subliminal messages to stay comfortable. Hallelujah. I'm speaking subliminal messages here to get you uncomfortable, to get you excited, to get you on fire. Yes, to start cleaning house because it is well worth it, brother and sister. You are the vessel. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seven, it says, but... We have these treasures in earthen vessels that, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You see, God is doing the work within you. Acknowledge that you are a vessel and say yes to the Lord so the Lord can in turn begin to pour into you rivers of living water to be able to give to those who thirst and are in need. I know you want to help somebody. I know you want to hug. I know you want a friend. I know you want a girlfriend. I know you want a husband, a wife. I know you want somebody in your life to help you out with those daily challenges. I know it. I walk into homes every single day from young to old, from, 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 from dark to light. And people just want to have somebody, something to take care of, to be a part of, whether it's a dog that can't stop barking or it's a husband who just doesn't, who can't walk. It doesn't matter. We need each other. We substitute the need for humanity with other things. We are blinded to see that we need each other. We stay comfortable. You are a vessel, my friend. Here we go. Second Timothy also chapter two, 20 through 21. It says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purges himself, these from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified. And meant for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. And this is one of my key, one of my key scriptures here that I want you to remember. You see, in the master's house, right, there are many vessels he's saying. He says there's gold ones, there's silver ones, there's wooden ones, there's ones to use for honorable things, there's ones to use for dishonorable things. He says, this is the master's house, right? And in this house, he gets to choose what he uses, right? It says, if you being a man, therefore purge yourself from evil things. He says, you shall be a vessel unto honor. God will see you as a righteous vessel. Therefore, you will be used in the good things of this world and the good things of the kitchen to cook up good flavors, to be a salt of the world. Hallelujah. And not to be a, a poison of the world, the, the enemy, the devil that you see, you see, Jesus told the devil to get behind him. You see, at first the devil led Jesus. But once Jesus figured it all out and realized why he was taking them all these places, he said, you know what? I don't realize this all along here, but now it's my times, devil. He says, now you get behind me. You see. You see, the vessel was ready to be used for God's honor and God's glory. You and I are ready to be used for God's honor and God's glory. And God will continue to purge you as long as you are willing to say, yes, 
I can. But you see, the Bible tells us that all things happen for a reason to those that love God. He says, God is in all, through all, for all, and is all. That means that good, good and bad. That means that the sun will come up on just, just on the just and the unjust, both alike. These are all belongings to God. They all work together for the good to those that love God, right? And are called according to his calling and his purposes. Now look right here what it says in James chapter 4. Or oh, let's let's go to First Peter chapter three verse seven. It says, "Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto a weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers not be hindered." You see, he's talking about a husband and a wife, how they are both individual vessels, how the big vessel is to pour into the smaller, weaker vessel. Yes, how it is to 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 continue to be in one mind and one accord to live together of the grace of life. It says right here, it says, and as being heirs, heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Yes, God wants to do all this wonderful works. Stay on one mind and stay on one accord. The Bible tells you here that the husband is the is the stronger vessel, that he's responsible for the weaker vessel. Hallelujah. James 4, 7, it says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Hallelujah. First Thessalonians 4, chapter 4, verse 3 to 5. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you would abstain, abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust and conspicuous. Con, con, cu, con, con, piss, can seize, even as the Gentiles which known not God. Luke 8 16 it says, No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covered it with a vessel, or put it under the bed, but seeth it on a candlestick that they which enter may see the lights. First Colossians chapter three, verse 23 through 24. And we'll get back to the text in the book, which we are reading second Timothy. These are scriptures here to remind you that you are a vessel and that you are to keep it clean, sanctified, practice your and, and exercise your faith. Hallelujah. And whatsoever you do, do it, Hartly as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. So what are you saying, uh, Pastor Easy here? I'm saying, brother and sister, that we are vessels to be used for God's honor and for God's glory. And once you realize that you are a vessel, you are to say, what are, what am I holding in my vessel today? Is it love or is it anger? Am I allowing myself to be used for God's honor and for God's glory? Or am I allowing the devil to use me today? Am I allowing the negative infor the forces to use me today? Am I letting legions control me and walk me towards pigs so that they can drown me? Or what is taking place? Hallelujah. And then I go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 14, and so on. The Bible says to remind you. The Bible is telling us to remind each other. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14, it says, Remind them of these things. Charge them before the Lord. Not to strive about words that do not profit. To the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present your to present yourselves approved of God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. He rightly divides the truth, but shuns profane and idling babbling. For they will increase to more ungodliness. And their messages will be spread like cancer. He's talking about a vessels here. These vessels saying that the resurrection is already past. And they overthrow the faith of some. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows who are his and the and let everyone who is named of Christ depart from iniquity. So he's reminding you here, brothers and sisters. So that you can say, so that you can say, or later have an excuse that nobody told you so, and that one day somebody could say, I told you so. Let's read that again. Remind them of these things, charge them before the Lord. What does he say? He says, charging them. What does that mean? That means challenging you. Hallelujah. That means promoting change, promoting you. Hallelujah. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord to strive about words to it says it's before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit. To the ruin of years, don't be one of those brothers and sisters whose conversation is all about your muscles, who your conversation is all about your cars and your successes in life, and all about how you found the perfect one. Let's not hear stories about like this. We don't want it. The Bible says, the Bible says that don't worry about these types of conversations. These conversations are poor. They're disgusting, as a matter of fact. I don't like them, and God doesn't like them. I don't want to know about your muscles, right, and how you keep uh, uh, pumping. I don't want to know about your car. And what, how big its wheels are, and the sickest, sickest, the sickest whip you have on the block. Hallelujah. God doesn't care about that. He says, it says, it says, it says, be diligent to present yourselves approved by God. It says, before the Lord, to not strive about words of no profit, for they ruin of hearers, to ruin of the hearers, meaning. These types of conversations, they bring within you a drive, some demons almost, right? They start ruining you because you start competing. And we are not here to compete. We are not here to have conversations like that. We are here to conversate about how God brings quality of life and how he wants to bring it in your present state. Hallelujah. It says, be diligent in the present be diligent to present your yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. I am not ashamed of this gospel. I, or, it, Hallelujah. Rightly dividing the word of truth. It says, but it says, but profane. It says, but shun. What does shun mean? It says, get away from that. Stop that. Put your hand in my er. But shun. Profane and idle babbling. Words that get nowhere. Conversations that get nowhere. Inspirational words that get nowhere. Your attempts to encourage somebody that gets nowhere. The only one that encourages is the Holy Spirit and the truth of God. The word of God. Brothers and sisters, and if you cannot bring the word of truth at that very moment, the Bible says it's best to be quick to listen, slow to speak. And slow to wrath because your wrath does not produce the righteousness of God. 
when you get angry, your temple is filled with deceit. You're, when you're angry, your temple is your your temple, your vessel is filled with unforgiveness. When you're angry, your vessel is filled with animosity. It's no longer filled with the vessel with the spirits of the of, of God, of the Holy Spirit. No, you are partaking in the vessels of negativity, of darkness. You're playing with witchcraft, as one would say, some would say. Yes. It says, but shun profane and idling babbles, for they will increase to more ungodliness. We should be encouraging each other, saying, well done. Keep it going. Yes, all the way. Don't stop, brother. You're awesome. You are doing great, brother. God loves you, sister. There is nothing that is unseparable between you and him. Nothing that I can say, nothing that she can say. God, he has a special calling and a special plan for you, my brother and my sister. So let's shun profane and idling babbling, for they increase into more ungodliness. And their messages will spread like a cancer. Hymenaeus and Philidius are of this sort, who they strive concerning the faith saying that the resurrection and the foundation of God stands, having the seal. The Lord knows those who are his and let everyone who is named by Christ depart from iniquity. Hallelujah. But in, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and used for the masters, prepared for every good work. Flee also useful lust. The pursuit of the pursuit. It says, flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, pursue faith, pursue love. Hello, pursue peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputings. Knowing that they are generating strife. What are they doing? They are generating strife. What does that mean? Generating strife. That means that they are in the background starting to generate something to bring in division, to bring you to to bring your faith into less status, to bring you, to bring you confused, to bring you to a point where you don't want to drive no more, to bring you to a point where you're unashamed of the gospel, to bring you to the point where you're like, I don't need God right now, to bring you to the point where you're like, God is not for me. Hello, somebody. He says, flee also useful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace, and those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. It says, but avoid foolish and ignorant disputing, knowing that they are generating strife. And there's a period after that strife. You should know, brother and sister, what comes with strife. He says, stop being uh, uh, so easily entangled with useless conversations. He said, put that to a halt. Be powerful and say, stop. They are generating strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all, able to teach patience. In humility, correcting those who are in oppression. If God perhaps will grant 
them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snares of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will. Amen. I, I pray that after these messages penetrate all corners of the world, that when God to starts to show off and show up, I pray that a lot of us will come to repentance on how we see each other and who each other have been in our lives. I pray that you will repent because the Bible says that let every man be a liar and only God truth. So you are a vessel, brother and sister. You were created to be a vessel, brother and sister. And that vessel is being used, the Bible tells us, that it is used for much purposes. As it says there, silver, gold, wood, some for good, some for bad. It's all in the master's house. He created it all. The devil has no power. God has the power. He gives the power in which he allows. He is infinite in where he wants to be. Yes, he is. He is limited to where he wants to be. Hallelujah. Look at that. The devil doesn't want you to believe. He doesn't want you to hear this message. He doesn't want you to get involved in church functions. He doesn't want you to put your ears to anything that preaches God, that anything that preaches faith, that anything that preaches that you can. Hallelujah. It says, chapter four, it says, I charge you therefore brothers before God and the Lord Jesus, you who judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince. Rebuke. Exhort. With all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But according to their own desires. Because they have itchy ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth. And be turned aside unto fables. But you, brother and sister, you, temple of the Holy Spirit, you, vessel of good, you, son and child and woman of God, you, man of God, woman of God, you, be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Hallelujah. Fulfill your calling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the temple. You are the vessel. You are the branches. You are the fruits. Hallelujah. You are the temple. And today's message, a powerful message, if you can just grasp and understand that you have the power to understand that you have the power to be that vessel of good, to stop allowing corruption and evil and deceit and anger and malice and unforgiveness, continue to fill up your vessel and continue to pollute who you really are and what gets you going, hallelujah. 
But God says that your temple is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He says, practice these things. It says, flee from all these vain conversations, communication, conversations that don't edify nothing. You know, it's kind of sad that we have conversations to each other that really go nowhere, that br really bring no purpose, that brings no, that brings no exercise into our life, but brings us more comfortable in the state which we are. Meaning, meaning they are not, they are not promoting change in our lives. They are only promoting guilt and condemnation. And they only promote bad. Well, I'm here to tell you today that through Jesus Christ, as I get the music playing, Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is through Jesus Christ that we are going to be able to overcome. It is through Jesus Christ that we are giving a new life. It is through Jesus Christ that we will be filled for his honor and for his glory, to be used for his honor and glory, to find purpose. Yes, you are a vessel with purpose. You are a vessel being used by God. I pray, I pray that you will accept Jesus Christ if you have not accepted him, because if you have not accepted him, you are just a vessel to circumstances, meaning you could be a vessel to be used for very evil at that very time. And even those that are for God, let's just see, for example, some of the apostles who got crucified just like Christ did, you know, something that was very evil turned out to be something that was very beautiful and life-changing until 2,000 years, this word is still being proclaimed. The name of Jesus is still being preached. Hallelujah. We have people who run our countries who don't want that name to be the name which controls the countries and the world. Hallelujah. They'll promote a different gospel. And like I said in one of my sermons in the past, that if you were to take this Bible and that you were to exercise all of its principles and all of its values without using any of the name of Jesus or God or Christ, this stuff will have to come to pass. Because God's word goes forth and it does not come back void. So I don't care in what platform you are in. The Bible teaches us this. But the Bible also teaches us the most important key is that there is no way unto the Father except through Christ Jesus. That he has been the mediator, that he has been the example to follow, that he has been the example to look up to. Hallelujah. He has been the example for us chosen few that are walking this narrow road to be the example of everything that God is bringing into our place, in our path. God is the potter. He understands what you need to have, what you need to be. He understands everything. God understands every detail of your life. The Bible tells us that every follicle and hair is numbered by him. The Bible tells us, the Bible tells us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. It was a mistake for letting these books come out to the public. You see, they tried to hide the truth by giving us very few. They tried to hide the power by giving us very few. But my Bible tells me that the last shall be first and that the first shall be last and that the very few will become much and that the very much will become few. Whatever that means. To me, it means something. The Bible says to not be ignorant. Do not be deceived. Do not be a friend of the world. It says to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy with God, to be a metity, to be separated. 
the Bible says to stop bringing in all these outer influences into your relationships. He says, let God be the only thing true in your relationships. He says, let the Holy Spirit run within your relationships. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the vessels, brother and sisters. God has a special calling for you. If you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and you are coming to a point in your life where you need transformation and you need change, and you're just tired of being sick and tired as the same goes, you know, and you've come to a point where you want to believe God and it's in there because the Bible says that you have a spirit within you that cries out, Abba, Father, meaning you have a spirit inside you that wants the uh, wants to be filled and wants to have that purpose and wants to have that connection with you, God, that there is something in you. And if that is you, brother and sister here, and you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, tonight, this morning, wherever you may be, wherever you're hearing this message, whether it's on YouTube, live, Facebook, I pray that it touches you right now. And if that's you, I want you to repeat this prayer. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my mind. Give me a new life, Jesus. Tell him you want a new life. Say, Jesus, give me a new life, Jesus. Say, I believe and I confess with my mouth, Jesus. You have to believe it. You have to say it. I confess with my mouth, Jesus. I believe with my heart that you died and that you rose again and that you can give me this new life and that you are giving me this new life. You have to believe it. You have to confess it. Hallelujah. Say, yes, Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my mind. From this day forward, God, let your will, your perfect will be done in me and through me. Hallelujah. Brother and sister, if you just repeated that prayer with me, the Bible says that there are angels right now in heaven rejoicing. And I'll tell you what, I'm there to say that there are angels right now around you and camping, ministering to you, preparing your heart. Yes, they are. They are cleaning the vessel right now. They are bringing healing upon you right now. They are bringing inspiration to you right now. They are giving you thanksgiving. They are giving you joy right now. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is working within you. The angels are encamping around you. Hallelujah. God wants you to know to be confident that he is in you, that he is working in you. Don't let them convince you that he's not. Who is them? The enemy, the demons, the legions, the forces that are trying to manipulate you. When God is trying to manipulate you through his word. He wants to get it inside you before the world completely consumes you. And when the and when the world completely consumes you, it gives birth unto death. And the Bible says that in hell that there will be tormented day and night, that there is a gulf, a line that separates heaven and hell that no man can cross. Hallelujah. The only man that was able to cross that was Jesus when he went down and defeated Satan. Yes, and he rose again, giving you the power to trample over snakes and serpents. Hallelujah. God is giving you the power to be an overcoming, overcoming and overachieving. God wants to bless you, shake down, ran over, press together. God really wants to use you. And he is daring you to step out and to believe 
what your spirit and your heart is telling you already to. In the name of Jesus, as I end this service, we're going to say a beautiful prayer. We're going to give God thanksgiving. We're going to give him some praise. We're going to proclaim victory. We're going to proclaim vision. We're going to proclaim healing. We're going to proclaim breakthroughs. We're going to proclaim change. We're going to proclaim challenge. We're going to come. We're going to we're going to proclaim. Yes. New words. Hallelujah. New vocabularies, new friends. We pray that God will take away the friends that are not providing any benefits to our spiritual walk. Hallelujah. If we're not able to outreach to them, I pray that they will go and reach out somewhere else. Hallelujah. Yes. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I come to you. We come to you. Yes. Facebook, uh, YouTube comes to you every year, Father. Everyone that agrees, Father, on one mind and one accord with your Holy Spirit, God. Yes, Father, I pray, Lord, a special touch that goes out, Lord, to touch every saint, Father, to touch every servant, God, to touch every healer, God, to touch every giver, God, to touch every wisdom teacher, Father, to, to touch every form of ministry you have out here in this world god i pray your servants father will receive a special touch within these days these hours these minutes these seconds lord hallelujah father we thank you for the visions you are giving us god for the challenges that are rising up father for the list father in which we must father execute lord yes father to get those victories god that you have for us lord your word says to be raised, to teach them and raise them in the ways of God so that they will not go astray, Father. I pray wisdom for your children and for my brothers and my sisters, God. I pray that strength will be filled within them, Father, that when their victories come from overcoming all those demons and all those mindsets, Father, and all those legions that try to come in and infiltrate their heart, Lord, and their mind, God, I pray that your word will rise up within them with confidence, Lord. Yes, Lord, with confidence, Lord, to say no to the babbling conversations that get nowhere, God. Yes, Lord, to the vain and useless communication, Lord, that leads to nothing, God. Yes, Father, to the individuals, Lord, that are only promoting uh, self-glory, God, or self-worthiness or self-righteousness, God. Yes, Lord, that you will continue, Father, to expose within us, God, the filth, Lord, that we may continue to willingly clean house, Lord. Yes, Father, for your word says that we are your sheep, that you know us by our voice and our voice, and we know you by yours, Lord, that we are sensitive, God, to what you are doing, God. We know that there is nothing new under the sun, Lord. Let us not get weary in doing good. Let us not get weary, Father afraid lord to step out god concerned father letting the world penetrate us with their worries and their and and their propaganda lord to give us a sense of liberty to give us a sense of purpose god i pray that we can see beyond that lord and see god that you are the orchestrator god that you are the master god that you are the craftsman behind this lord all of it god Yes, Satan comes down to deceive. Yes, Satan is at work, Lord. We know, Father, that he wants to enter our vessels, God. I know that he wants to enter the believer's vessels, God. If I war with him, I know the believers war with him, God. And you warred with him when he attempted to show you his works for your life, God. And you said, no, you get behind me, Satan. Yes, Lord, with that same proclamation, I pray that our brothers and sisters could stand with confidence, God, that when the devil or the enemy or Satan and its legions come in and knock at their front door, God, I pray that they be strong and courageous to be able to have that seed of mustard and faith within them, Lord, to say, Mountain, you be removed in the name of Jesus, and it shall be done, God. Hallelujah, Father. I pray for those, Lord, 
that are stepping out in faith to believe, Father, a greater within them, Lord. And that is you, God. Yes, Lord, I pray for everyone across the world, Lord, that they may be touched by your Holy Spirit, Father, that we can learn how to use, Father, each other, Father, towards your honor and your glory, God. Teach us to strategize, God, how to bring community, a powerful community, God, one that is built and moved on morals and characters, Lord, morals and standards, God, of value, Father, of quality, Lord. Let us teach those that are on the street, that are hurting, Father, that are about to inject themselves, Lord, with more drugs to escape the miseries, Father, of the legions in which the, the, the bondage they have them in, Lord. Let us be the light, Father, to be able to expose them, Father. Yes, Lord. Let us take out the planks in our own eyes, Lord, before we take planks in others, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, Father, continue to exercise and challenge our drive, Father, who we are, God. Continue to challenge us, God. Hallelujah, Father. As an athlete is challenged to perform, God, let us be with that same mindset, God. Let us not go entangled with the affairs of the world, God, but let us be transformed, renewed, Father, by your word, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus, for every man and every woman, God, who understands that they are a vessel, God, a vessel for your honor and for your glory, God, and that all the other vessels, God, they are under your control as well, Lord. Though you let the enemy influence us, but we are the separated. We are the set aside, God. We are the chosen few, Lord. We can acknowledge it, Father. We pray that more will come to the saving grace and the knowledge, God, of you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for every ministry that's out there. Yes, God, we thank you for everything that's out there, God. Hallelujah. For every church, for every establishment, for everything that is right now at this very time, in this very moment, exercising our hearts, Father, that you are raising up a new generation. Yes, that we will be blessed from the mess, God. Yes, Lord, as my sermon uh, on YouTube, one of the titles, Lord, blessed from the mess, God. Yes, set aside, set apart, Lord. We drawing the line today, God, that you, Father, who done the work in us are continuing and you will finish it all the way unto eternity, Father, where we are dwelling in the mansions and the spaces in which you promised, Lord. Many more promises, the mysteries of God, reveal them to your people. Let us continue to be excited. Let us continue to be challenged. Let us continue to be motivated, Father, for we are excited, Father, to wake up every morning to see that sunrise, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God, I promote only good. I promote only Jesus, love, patience, peace, and long suffering. In the name of Jesus, let your confidence be filled. Amen. Amen and amen, brothers and sisters. That was a powerful message. I know that you are moved. I know you will be motivated to check it out again. You know, don't forget also you can go and check out other messages that I have done previous on YouTube. Like I said, this is a brand new ministry. It's just getting going. It's already taken off. The, as they say, the airplane has already taken off. The train has already left the station, right? The little sprout has already hit, seen the sun. It already came out of the ground. God is really challenging me, challenging me to challenge you to be a part, you know, to get involved however you can. If it's first of all, starting by subscribing, liking things, you know, this is where it's going to start. Hallelujah. But God says, as long as you continue to toil in the field and in the vision God has for you, and that you believe without doubting, my brother and my sister, that it will come to pass. And he wants you to know that in your choices and in those types of decisions, there will be an outer influence trying to come in to take away that vision from you, to take away that belief in where God is calling you, saying, hey, how can you run a church? You're not wise. Hey, who is it? Who are you think you are? You know, they'll start coming with all kinds of accusations and, and this and that. But I want you to know that if they did it to Jesus, they're going to do it to you. But you must persevere all the way until the, the crucifixion. 
Meaning, I'm not saying you have to be crucified. I'm saying that when you make that choice and until you see that goal accomplished, you will not allow anybody to influence your heart and your drive towards that success. Because when you get that success, my brother and sister, every detail that came in from the outside will have to come to almost a stage of repentance. I hate to say such things, but this is no longer, this is no, or this is the way things work at times. Those who thought was not gonna work, end up working, baby. God chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. He doesn't choose many wise. He doesn't choose those of scholars and those of high degrees. He doesn't choose the rich and wealthy because their dependency is on the rich and wealthy, but he chooses on folks like you and I, you know, who are out here working in the mist and the cracks and the crevices, getting creative, learning how to bring this gospel into our now and current stage and generation. There is a new generation rising, brothers and sisters. I pray that you are a part of that generation, that you and I, when we are 60 years old, that we can have a dwelling place where we can be uh, 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 eating eating grapes and, and having a good time talking about Jesus and how we endured through all of this and we didn't allow all of this to, to, to put a stumbling block but we kept Jesus Christ the foundation of it all in the name of Jesus brothers and sisters God bless you pastoreasy.com is another way to get involved uh, God bless you God knows you he knows your voice and you know his in the name of Jesus I pray Amen and amen. I love you guys and God bless.